Interesting. So this, uh, you know, sort of a more uh, pedestrian vernacular way of saying it is, look, bad guys will do what they do. I mean, criminals will always find a way. Mm -hmm. In terms of generative AI, what is out there right now to, to mitigate the risk and assuming that, yeah, they, they are able to get around this? Mm -hmm. So it, generative AI is it's captivated all of us. As a CEO of a, of, a, of a company, I'm leveraging and trying to understand how we can use it ourselves to be more productive, to, to be more efficient. But ultimately, it does become a tool in the hands of the bad actors out there that allows them to be able to elevate the productivity of the, of the hackers themselves. And, and by doing that, they can take the traditional methods that are out there, like social engineering, phishing, uh, session hijacking, to the next level. What we need to understand is, as organizations, we need, to, we need to protect against that by leveraging AI to analyze data better, to understand how we, can, how, we can, how we can link into other systems within the overall cybersecurity tool chain, and come together with that data to produce more meaningful defensive mechanisms against the, the bad actors that are out there. Is there already evidence that the bad guys, criminals, are already starting to adopt or use uh, even sort of uh, 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 very basic or simple forms of AI to do what they do, to hack. Yeah, I think, I think you see the, the same things we hear stories about, again, on the internal side, all of us using it to, to write presentations better or to, they to do come the same to, thing? to, they're doing the same thing. They're changing the way they come up with the, the emails that they use for phishing. They're doing things called vishing, which we see a lot of these days, which is the idea of using deep fakes to actually mimic voice recordings of people and be able to use that to bypass the traditional security measures. That's a scary thought. It is. It, it is. It's a, a wild west out there at the moment. Wow. So, in terms of mitigating the risk uh, of uh, actors, uh, bad actors, getting around uh, 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 generative uh, AI, etc., uh, which part of the world is in the lead doing this? Mm. I guess it would have to be in the states, or. Yeah, I think it's a combination of uh, the tech companies like ourselves that are investing millions of dollars in, in the preventive tools to make sure that we can take advantage of this technology to, to if you will, you know, fight innovation with innovation. Um, but it also is uh, governments around the world that are also investing in trying to understand how to, how to protect entities um, through, through various measures, whether it be understanding where regulations are required, whether it be actually bringing together tech companies to make sure we're working together to be able to combat some of this threat. Right, I hate to say it, but I mean, obviously CyberArk has competition, has rivals, right? How big is the market for uh, new products that are going to help uh, mitigate AI risk? I think what you'll see is AI being embedded into tools that already exist to make them more powerful. For example, us at CyberArk, we've embedded AI into our endpoint product. We, we use it to actually be able to create policy more effectively and make sure that the product is deployed more expansively at our customers. So it's a way of enhancing the technology versus a standalone technology itself.